Yeah. All right. Welcome. Welcome to the show. It is Wrestling Uncensored. I am Dave Simon. He is Johnny North. We are back. We are here on your radios every weekend. We are here on iTunes, on Google Play, however you listen to this show. And, of course, there's only one way to watch this show. That's on YouTube, on our famous YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net. Subscribe, click the bell to get the notifications. That way, every time we have a new show, every time Wrestling Uncensored is posted up on the YouTube channel, you get to watch it. How easy is that? All the info for all our YouTube shows available at ringsidereport.net. We have a big show for you here. We had a big show a couple days ago with Ringside Report. That show is available on our YouTube channel. You can watch that. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave us a five-star review. However you ingest the Ringside Report network, give us a review. Subscribe. It helps us continue on. And we are continuing on. We are back. Did you think we were gone? Did you think the show was over forever, or did you know we were on vacation? Johnny, w- were you aware? Johnny, it's good to see you, man. You're back. I haven't seen you in, feels like uh, a month at least. It was only two weeks, but yeah, it does feel like a lot longer. It feels like a lot longer, because I see you usually, uh, you know, once or twice a week. Right. At minimum, right? Well, and we had big events that just happened as well. SummerSlam, the big UFC that happened the other week, too. My goodness. There's been a lot going on since I was on vacation. Had a great time in beautiful Picto, Nova Scotia. Shout out to all my people in eastern Canada. Love it out there. Love the Maritimes. Had a great time. We'll be back real soon. I'm not loving all the bites you have on you, but that's okay. Yeah, I got bit up by some mosquitoes or horse flies or something. You know, It happens, man. All right? Country living, John. You know what that's like. I'm the city boy here. You're, you're from the country, John. You know what bugs are like. Yeah, I also know what uh, bug spray is, too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not that prepared. I'm not prepared for bug spray. Uh, but that's another story for another day, Johnny North. <laughs> Let's stick with the professional wrestling. We have a lot to talk about. Like you mentioned, we've been gone for a few weeks. SummerSlam happened a couple of weeks ago. I want to talk a little bit about SummerSlam because we didn't do a recap show like we normally do. Right. Usually on the YouTube channel, you know, right after every WWE pay-per-view, we go live, we break it down. And SummerSlam was the first one that we haven't done in maybe a year or two. And it's crazy. It's, it's my favorite while. pay-per-view so far this year. I thought it was an amazing pay-per-view. Really? Oh, yeah. Easily 8 on 10, maybe more. I gave it about a 7. Okay. Still I thought, good. I thought it was a passable SummerSlam. I didn't think it was the best SummerSlam I've ever seen. I didn't think it was the best pay-per-view of the year. I thought everything was decent, but there was not one match that stood out as a five-star classic match that will stand the test of time. I don't think there was really one match on that entire card that you could say was an instant classic. I think a lot of people look back at the Brock Lesnar-Seth Rollins match and be like, wow, that was incredible, especially because I had low expectations for that match. I mean, it went over 10 minutes, so that was pretty impressive. Brock worked. Brock, he did a bit. He did a lot more than I expected. A lot. Was it a classic match? I think it will go down as one of the all-time classics, especially in SummerSlam history. Get out of here. Seriously, John? 100%. All-time classic matches or Brock Lesnar matches or I- Seth Rollins matches? Like, you can't put that in, in the all-time great matches like Austin, Brett, WrestleMania 13. Like, you can't th- lump them in with some of the greatest matches of all time. Kenny Omega and Kazuchika Okada. You know, you can't okay. throw that 13-minute match that Brock Lesnar had amongst the greatest wrestling matches we've ever seen. The the Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, uh, you know, the, the Iron Man match. Like, no. Right. No, no, no. This is not up there with that. I think it's up there for... Greatest... Flair Steamboat. Like, this is not Flair Steamboat. But for greatest SummerSlam matches, because SummerSlam not usually one of the better pay-per-views. I mean, it's fun for moments, and we, I thought we had a lot of great moments, but all-time classics, not not that much. But this one, I thought, definitely was the match of the show. Hmm. I thought match of the show was Natty and Becky. It was good. And it, it went about the same amount of time 
as uh, Brock and Seth. They went 13 minutes and a half. Uh, Natty and Becky went 12 and a half. And they were two of the lengthier matches on this card. And I really like the uh, the technical wrestling, you know, the scientific wrestling, the real right. grappling stuff. It looked realer than pretty much every other match on the card. It looked more authentic. It looked like a real wrestling match was going on. It wasn't sports entertainment. It felt real. It looked good. It was snug. The grappling was tight. That was my match of the night. I loved seeing Natty and Becky go out there and have a real wrestling match. I think that was the only real wrestling match on the card. A submission match as well, which when you have two people that can work submission matches and Mm -hmm. trade hold for hold, that's my kind of thing. That's my kind of professional wrestling. I like pro wrestling that looks like an athletic contest, that looks like a fight, you know? Right. I know it's not a fight, but I like it to look as close to a real fight as possible. I'm a big fan of Zack Sabre Jr. out in New Japan. He's got that real technical wrestling style where his wrestling looks like authentic submission grappling. You know, it looks like mm-hmm. a real amateur wrestler or a jiu-jitsu guy and what they would do to turn you into a pretzel. And we saw elements of that from Natty and Becky which I appreciated very much, and I know that Natty's got that in her arsenal. We always see that from Natty, right. but you don't always see it from Becky, and I liked seeing the man break out some of her wrestling holds. She's not the greatest technician. She's no Bret Hart. She's no Daniel Bryan, but she definitely impressed, and I thought they had a great match. I thought the match was good. It's just there was some confusion and on my part, I guess, because it was a submissions match, and I guess you can't have rope break. Well, that makes sense. Well, no, to me, like they added this rule because before you used to always have rope break in submissions match. Yeah, but because the, the submissions end in the ring, so if you're out of the ring, rope you, break. But for this one, it seemed like it was false count anywhere submission. So you could have submitted your opponent outside of the ring, and it would have counted. That's what it seemed like. Because remember, she had her, like, I think, in the sharpshooter in the ropes, and the ref wasn't like letting, letting in the ropes. Slide. Yeah, yeah, it was letting it slide though. The ref wasn't saying break the hold. Yeah, it was very odd. But but think about this. Play this scenario out. If there are rope breaks mm-hmm. and the referee starts counting one, two, you have the, to the count of five, right? right? He gets to five. Natty doesn't break the hold. What's he gonna do? It's a disqualification. You can't disqualify somebody. The only way to end the match is by submission. It's a submissions match. You can't have it end by disqualification. This isn't Randy and Kofi. Well, that ended in double count. I know. That's, that's a joke. That's different. We'll get to that in a second. Right. But I, I, I think that made sense. Like, in, in my estimation, like, I get it. You want it to end by submission. You don't want it to end by disqualification. There are no disqualifications in that case. They could have used weapons. Right. They could have done anything as long as they got a submission. I get your point, but I also don't I don't hate that the rope breaks didn't count. I thought that was fine. I just wish they were clearer on it. When they say it's a submissions match, be clear that it's kind of a no disqualification, you know, submissions anywhere kind of match. I just wish they were clear with that because when it first happens, it's like, why isn't the rep breaking the hold? Okay. I don't think either of us were surprised that Becky won, right? Becky's still the champion, the Raw Women's Champion. Were you surprised that Seth beat Brock, though? I was. That was the only one I had it off. I had all the predictions right except that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. But it was still a fun match, though. I, I'm glad it was a better match than me being right with Brock just squashing him. But now we're back with, I mean, I don't like either option. I didn't like Brock holding the title and not showing up. Right. But I also don't like just giving it back to Seth Rollins. And now what? You know, Seth Rollins, since SummerSlam, he's become the Raw Tag Team Champion now with Braun Strowman. They beat Gallows and Anderson this week, which, like, pretty short-lived run for Gallows and Anderson. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And now Seth and Braun are the Tag Team Champions. Yeah, I'm surprised. I don't know if they really need to do it. I understand why they would do this, because they've done it many times in the past where they have two main event guys feuding. And they become tag team champions. We've seen this many times in the past. It's no bueno. I don't agree with doing it, but they did it. I don't so. like it. it. It's I could easily see the OC winning it back, though. For what? To help build this Braun and Seth Rollins feud. And that's what it is. 
Right. This is a Braun and Seth Rollins feud. This rem- it reminds me of uh, Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels winning the tag team titles together when they were feuding. Right, yeah. It kind of helped build their feud by holding the titles together. But Shawn and Steve didn't like each other before they won the belts together. Right. Braun and Seth kind of had an alliance. Even though Braun's like, oh, you better watch your back because I'm coming for the universal title. It's like, yeah, all right. But, like, are you? Well, he was looking at it on Raw right before they went out. Okay. Staring at it. Are you interested in seeing this play out? Braun and Seth and their feud and the tag team titles and they argue and then uh, 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 then here's a match for the universal title. Which, by the way, are we even going to get a clash of champions? Now that Seth is a Raw tag team champion and the universal champion, right? what is he going to defend a clash of champions? Will we see Seth double booked? We don't have a lot of time before this next pay-per-view. We've got one, two, three weeks of TV. This has happened before, though. Remember when he was the U.S. champion and, I believe, the WWE champion? He did double booking. God, why do they give everything to Seth Rollins? And that's, I think, my point. Why are we giving everything to Seth Rollins? Has he uh, lit the wrestling business on fire? Has he been the answer for the WWE? Has he been that guy that is going to push the WWE to the next level? I don't think he is. I don't think he is. And I think he has proven that he is not that guy. He's not the guy. He's not even the man. That's his uh, fiance, I think. Which, by the way, congratulations to Seth and Becky. Yeah, congrats. That's great. They are engaged to be married. That's great news. That was news uh, a couple days ago. Pretty big news. It's good to see people happy. Yeah. Hey, I'm happy for them. It's nice. Real nice. Doesn't do much for the wrestling gimmick. Seth Rollins is a solid wrestler. Yeah. He's not a top guy. Well, no, he is a top guy. He's a universal champion. He's on top. He's the main event. Is he the guy you want to see on top of your wrestling promotion? If you were running the WWE today, would Seth Rollins be your top guy? Maybe Intercontinental Champion. Still pretty good, though. Okay. So you answered my question with without really burying Seth Rollins. Exactly. Nice answer. Nice answer, John. <laughs> However, let's be real. Seth isn't the guy. He hasn't been the guy. It's not working. The promos don't work. And that's really his main problem. In the ring, he's very solid. He does good work. Is he the best in the company? I don't think so. It's not bad. He's not bad. He's not bad. But can you think of five guys better than him in the WWE right now? I can easily. Yeah, I can too. Yeah, sure. I mean, look at Sami Zayn and what they have him doing. Wouldn't you rather see Sami? Well, is Sami now a manager? I guess. It's kind of weird, but it's okay. It's bad. It's a uh, gross injustice of his talent, in my opinion. But Yep. What is Daniel Bryan? Well, Daniel Bryan's really on the downside of his career What now. is AJ Styles at this point? I mean, did you see AJ take a curb stomp just before Seth and Braun won the tag team titles on Raw? Yeah. They were outnumbered. Yeah, it was but, three on two. But it, AJ Styles, the phenomenal AJ Styles, was ringside. And Seth is just like, oh, yeah, whatever, curb stomp, ba-boom. I'm going to take the titles from your boys. AJ Styles, you're nothing to me. Like, really? Well, yeah, it made sense. He went to war with Brock Lesnar, and then the next night on Raw, less than 24 hours later, he has a competitive match with AJ Styles. Of course AJ is not on his level. That's the way they booked it. Yeah. I had high hopes for this uh, heel turn, bullet club, AJ Styles thing that they were doing. I like the OC. It's a good name. I like just OC, but I think they killed it. They're in the process of doing it, yeah. AJ is still the U.S. champion, though. He 
retained against Braun. I mean, he lost by DQ, but that was it. Yeah, he lost by disqualification. He still didn't beat Braun Strowman. He still can't beat Braun Strowman. Well, no one can beat Braun right now. Except for Seth when they wrestle. You think so? Probably, man. Seth just beat Brock Lesnar. You think he's going to not beat uh, Braun Strowman? Come on. Well, how many times can you not give the title to Braun Strowman? As many as you want. How many times could you not give the title to Kane or the Big Show when they challenged? But eventually they won. Sometimes. Very, very rarely. Right, but it happened. Okay, but if you take you know the number of times that they challenged versus the number of times that they won. Right, yeah. It's like a million to one. And Braun's on that path. And but... Braun's on that path. That's exactly what I'm saying. Braun is the new Kane or Big Show. That's how they book him. He's a big old monster who looks intimidating, who sometimes will be booked as intimidating as this unstoppable force, and then he'll be easily stopped by whatever baby face you're trying to put over, Seth Rollins, John Cena, Batista, whoever it is at the time. Of course, yeah. Okay. So, like, I know the formula, and I'm not buying it. That's the problem. Maybe I've watched too much WWE in my lifetime that I'm just like, yep, okay, I know where they're going. I know where they're going. I don't care. That's where I'm at with the WWE these days. I just, I feel like I could see their moves 10 steps ahead. I'm not really impressed by anything they're doing, and there's nothing that's really exciting me for the next show. Take Daniel Bryan, for example. He is my favorite wrestler. I know that. Maybe my favorite wrestler of all time. Like, he is in my top five all time, right? Top three, I thought, no? It's like Brett, Daniel Bryan, and... Stone Cold? Well, I love Stone Cold, brother. Right, yeah. But as far as going back and watching Stone Cold matches, not something I do. Oh, wow. Surprise. Yeah. He had some really good matches. He wasn't my favorite wrestler. You mentioned the Brett match. Sure. I mean, yeah, but that's a Brett match, you know? Okay. I give a lot of credit to Brett. I'm not going to sit here and disparage the good name of Stone Cold Steve Austin. I will actually recommend that you go listen to his podcast because it's fantastic. He had a great episode with uh, the Nature Boy Ric Flair where they're discussing the life of Harley Race, which was very, very entertaining. And another episode that I listened to uh, where Stone Cold interviews Hulk Hogan. I heard that. And yeah. that's like two wrestling gods meeting and, and having a conversation. If you're a wrestling fan, you owe it to yourself to go and listen to Steve Austin and Hulk Hogan, the only two stars that Vince McMahon ever truly made. That's only like part one, though, because he said like we couldn't even cover all the career. We only I know. got up to WCW, so they're going to have to do part two eventually. And that's another point that I maybe I'll make on another on another episode, but I truly believe that Vince McMahon only made two superstars that changed the business. Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And you could say whatever you want about The Rock and Triple H that, yes. and the Attitude Era. Yeah. None of that happens. They don't beat WCW without Steve Austin. Steve Austin was the top guy. At WrestleMania 14, when Steve Austin won the WWF Championship over Shawn Michaels, The Rock was wrestling for the Intercontinental title. Right. Steve Austin was the man, and everybody else was a supporting character. The Rock was a great supporting character, and look what he's done with his career and his life ever since then. But I know that there are a lot of wrestling fans that maybe, you know, are grown up now, but they didn't grow up during the Attitude Era, didn't see the height of Steve Austin. I'm here to tell you, I lived through the height of Steve Austin. No one was ever as big as Stone Cold Steve Austin other than maybe Hulk Hogan. Two guys that revolutionized the business. If it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, there'd be no WrestleMania, there'd be no WWE, there was no WWF. If it wasn't for Hulk, for Stone Cold Steve Austin, there'd be no WWE. The WWE would not have beat WCW in the Monday Night Wars. It wouldn't be a publicly traded company. WrestleMania wouldn't be doing stadium shows every single year. The reason why everybody is still here and still doing big business is because of Stone Cold Steve Austin. I, I won't One man. I won't disagree with that, but there was a period in time, like late 99 to 2000. They had already 2000. won the war. Well, they had already won the war by then. WCW was bought in early 2001. Right, but Yeah, The it? Rock had the year 2000. Who cares? Stone Cold Steve Austin had 97, 98, 99. Those were his years. Those were That was his era, and he brought the WWE from a hokey kind of, you know, kids show to the Attitude Era, to Hell Yeah, to the BMF, to Stone Cold Steve Austin. He changed the game forever and brought the WWE up 
so that they could beat WCW. It was all Stone Cold. Great supporting cast. Everybody did their job. Sure. But Austin was a catalyst. Just like, hey, Hogan had a great team. Roddy Piper, you know, Paul Orndorff, all sorts of great wrestlers. Jake the Snake Roberts. Macho. Macho Man Randy Savage, Mr. Perfect. All sorts of great wrestlers during that era. But the world doesn't spin without Hulk Hogan. That's true, yeah. You know, and the business doesn't move without Steve Austin. Two guys, two guys that the WWE needed to survive. And they're Hulk Hogan and Steve Austin. And they had a conversation on Austin's podcast that, you know, if you're a wrestling fan, go back and listen to it. It's worth your time. Well, you can argue that Vince just stole Hogan from AWA. Hogan really developed himself there, and Vince just took that idea and ran with it. He made it bigger. He turned the volume right. up. Right. Yeah. Daniel Bryan. <laughs> We're talking about Daniel Bryan here. Oh, yeah. Future, uh, current, yes. My current favorite wrestler. Yeah. What are they doing with him? He's in some he, sort of mystery angle. He's in the the who done it angle with Roman Reigns. So Roman Reigns got stuff thrown on him, right? Like a set fell on him. Well, no, he dodged it though. He dodged. Well, no, he it it was uh, he was under it. He just survived. I think he dodged the car, didn't he? He no, I think like it fell, but like it fell where he wasn't. Right. That that's where it was. So he didn't die. Yeah. But people seem to be trying to kill Roman Reigns. There was a car too, right? A car that tried to hit him. Yeah. Nailed the car that he was in. He was in. So people are trying to kill Roman Reigns. A couple weeks ago, Buddy Murphy says he witnessed the attack, and it was Rowan who attacked Roman Reigns. So Roman Reigns got really mad and wanted to attack Rowan. And then Daniel Bryan, who's Rowan's tag team partner, said it wasn't Rowan. Buddy Murphy is a liar. And Roman's like, Buddy Murphy, are you a liar? And Buddy Murphy's like, no, I'm not a liar. And Roman's like, yeah, whatever. Let's have a wrestling match. Don't know why. And it was a pretty good match, you know. Happened last week. It was pretty good. Yeah. And Roman won, of course. course. (laughs) Then Daniel Bryan gets mad saying, Buddy Murphy, you are a liar. It wasn't Rowan. Stop saying that. You're a big liar and I don't like that. And I will teach you a lesson on SmackDown. So they have a wrestling match. And Daniel Bryan loses clean to Buddy Murphy. It made a lot of sense. It puts Buddy Murphy over. It makes you believe in Buddy Murphy now. He needed that win more than anything. How come he couldn't beat Roman? No, he can't beat Roman. No, no, no. Oh, but you could beat Daniel Bryan? Of course. Because Daniel Bryan's expendable? No, but he's a big star, and you needed to build Buddy Murphy to make people believe he could win King of the Ring. So which... you use Daniel Bryan for that? Yeah. I don't like that. It's fine. Like, Daniel Bryan will get the big match. Fine for you. How come he can't lose to Randy or something, you know? No, Randy, like, he's going for the WWE title. Like, he can't lose right now, Randy. He already went for the WWE title. Right? It's not over Double count out. It's over. Let's move on. It's not over. (laughs) You know that it won't end. Yeah, I know. Two more pay-per-views. Yeah, at least. At least. Randy will probably walk away with the title at the end of this feud, right? Or win and then lose it. So what's Daniel Bryan doing? So then at the end of SmackDown, after Bryan loses to Buddy Murphy, he's backstage and him and Rowan just beat up Buddy Murphy for some reason, right? Because he really doesn't like him. And then Daniel Bryan promises to reveal who really was the attacker of Roman Reigns. So at the end of the show, Roman Reigns is backstage in Daniel Bryan's locker room and they have a man under a hood. They reveal the man, and he's bald, like Rowan, and he's got a big orange beard, like Rowan. So he kind of looks like Rowan. Who is this man? I have no idea. So Daniel Bryan is saying, look, it wasn't Rowan that attacked you. It's this Rowan lookalike that I have now produced. What? What? What is this? Why is Daniel Bryan's good name and great wrestling ability being dragged down into this muck, into this nonsense? It's terrible. And I guess it's going to end with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns having a match, right? And Roman Reigns will probably beat Daniel Bryan because, like, I mean, do the math. Roman Reigns beat Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy beat Daniel Bryan. So Roman Reigns is going to beat Daniel Bryan. 
Well, Roman Reigns barely loses, right? Yeah. So. Cool. What does this mean for Daniel Bryan? Like, this is my main problem with the WWE. The guys that are really good, that are the guys you really want to see on TV, are stuck in these terrible angles that aren't going anywhere, and they're getting buried. Daniel Bryan, terrible angle. AJ Styles, thought it was going somewhere. Obviously not. They took the tag titles off his buddies. And who else? Who else is really good? Oh, Sami Zayn's a manager now. Finn yeah. Balor disappeared. And all we get, all we get in the WWE is uh, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns and uh, Bill Goldberg once in a while. That was nice. I like Goldberg. Okay. Let's talk about Bill Goldberg when we come back because I have a lot to say about Bill Goldberg and his appearance at SummerSlam. We're also going to get to the King of the Ring, and uh, we'll tell you how the Wednesday night wrestling wars are shaping up. WWE making some big moves this week. It is wrestling uncensored. A little pause on the radio side, and we will be right back. And welcome back. It is Wrestling Uncensored. I am Dave Simon. He's Johnny North. Follow him on Twitter at North Genesis. You can follow me at Dave Simon MMA on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow Johnny on Instagram, you should because you can see how jacked he is. Well, you can just watch the, us on YouTube as well. You could also watch us on YouTube to see how jacked Johnny is. At North Genesis on Twitter, Genesis Johnny North on Instagram. And we'll be hearing about Johnny North wrestling matches that are coming up. Johnny's got some big matches coming up in the month of September. And for more on that, we'll be talking at length uh, about Johnny's wrestling career on uh, Dave and Johnny Live. That's when we do a lot of the Johnny North wrestling talk. I also have a book review on the latest episode of Dave and Johnny Live. That's right. I read a book. Can you believe it? I'm a little bit surprised, but I did. I read a book, and I loved it. So uh, check out Dave and Johnny Live every Friday afternoon on the YouTube channel. It is a YouTube exclusive show. Johnny and I talk about all sorts of different things. Book reviews, Kanye West, Netflix shows, pro wrestling, whatever else is on our mind. It doesn't look like a particularly long book. No, it's not a long book. We have it here. I have it in front of me. It's the Norm MacDonald book that I will be reviewing on uh, the next episode of Dave and Johnny Live, or the the last episode. You can check it out right now, actually, on our YouTube channel. You know not, I mean? not a long book, but hey, John, I read the whole thing, okay? So be proud of me. About 230 pages. Hilarious. Love this guy. Talk about him more on the latest episode of Dave and Johnny Live. Here we talk about professional wrestling. Johnny, Dolph Ziegler lost to Bill Goldberg at SummerSlam. Why? Because Goldberg's an attraction that they still want to use going forward. So that's why. How are they going to use him going forward? They use him for special events like SummerSlam. I could see him come back maybe at Survivor Series. At what point does Bill Goldberg do the right thing and lose to a current star? I lost the Undertaker. A current star. Taker's coming back, by the way. Like, a current star. What, the, what? What are we talking about? How old's Undertaker? What are you saying to me? He's still on the roster, like on the uh, on the Legends roster. Possibly. Come on. What do you mean he's coming back? When's he coming back? He should be back uh, right before Clash Champions, apparently. Really? For what? I'm not sure exactly, but he's advertised, I believe, the 10th, I believe, yeah, for SmackDown. Oh, boy. I'm probably to hype up the fact that he's going to be on the 20th anniversary SmackDown. Okay. So, when does Goldberg actually lose? I say WrestleMania. To who? Wow, that's tough. you got to use Goldberg to put somebody over. And I thought, hey, Dolph Ziggler needs this win. He's had nothing in his career. They need to put him over. They need to do something with Dolph Ziggler. He needed the win way more than Goldberg did. Mm. And, you know, just another Goldberg squash of Dolph Ziggler. It was nothing. It was not even a match. 
Will Goldberg actually lose to somebody at some point? Well, he doesn't really have to because Goldberg is just the attraction of him going out there and destroying somebody. Him going out there and losing to somebody, it's not that great of an attraction. So he doesn't really need to lose. Just him showing up and doing his you know, spear jackhammer, that's all people want to see. And people loved it. That was one of the greatest reactions of all of SummerSlam, besides Kevin Owens. Should have heard my reaction watching it at home. Oh, I could imagine. You were super pissed. Not happy. I know. Goldberg should lose at some point, right? He should put somebody over. Isn't that the whole point of the wrestling business? To leave it in a better state than when you entered? Well, Trish came back, right? And she lost? Yes, she did the right thing. And that's why Trish is respected by the wrestling business. Everybody loves Trish Stratus. You won't hear me say anything bad about Trish Stratus. She passed the torch to Charlotte Flair in her hometown. She did the right thing. She tapped out. She lost clean. Okay, and that's she a... put the next generation over, and everybody loves Trish. Everybody respects Trish. Nobody respects Goldberg, other than you and a couple other people, a couple other Goldberg marks. But, like, you know, most of the wrestling business doesn't have a lot of love or respect for Bill Goldberg. Ask Matt Riddle what he thinks about Bill Goldberg. They had a altercation, didn't they, at SummerSlam? They yeah, met. good luck, Goldberg. Matt Riddle actually fought in the UFC. He doesn't pretend that he fought in the UFC like you do. No, but he works. Goldberg for- is a pretend fighter. Goldberg walks around in his everyday life acting like he was a UFC heavyweight champion. Goldberg, in his mind, is the same as Brock Lesnar. He's not. He's not even close. Goldberg thinks he's Randy Couture. Randy Couture would beat the hell out of Goldberg. It's ridiculous. Matt Riddle fought at 170 pounds. He would smash Goldberg to pieces. Matt Riddle needs to chill on that Brock Lesnar talk. That Brock Lesnar stuff, though. He needs to not talk about fighting Brock. That's not a good idea for Matt Riddle. Once again, he fought at 170 pounds. Brock was a heavyweight. It's a difference. I don't just- But Goldberg. Yeah, go after Goldberg. Now, if the WWE was smart, that's the match they would do. Matt Riddle versus Goldberg. There's heat there. There was a supposed altercation backstage at SummerSlam where Riddle's like, hey, bro. And Goldberg's like, I'm not your bro. Riddle's like, all right, bro. And what's Goldberg really going to do? I think that match is the match you make. You put Riddle over, you push Goldberg aside, and everybody goes home happy. That, you know, that is the match that I would make. If if the WWE wanted to do the smart thing, wanted to do the the big match with Goldberg that would get people talking, Mm -hmm. Matt Riddle is the match. But, hey, they won't do it. You know they won't do it. If they were smart, they would do it. But they're not that smart, and they're not that in tune with what's hot in the wrestling business. That's their main problem. They don't have their finger on the pulse anymore. Maybe it's Vince. Maybe it's whoever he's putting in charge. Maybe it's the writing staff. I don't know who it is exactly or what the problem is in the WWE, but it seems clear that at one point they knew exactly what they were doing and they knew where to push the pieces and who to put where, and it worked. But these days, they seem like they don't have a clue. To be honest, you can blame Steve Austin for that because he just left the company high and dry. I blame Brock Lesnar. He left the company high yeah, and dry. He did the same thing, too. That, that They both hurt the company tremendously. The Rock for going to pursue his movie career. But The Rock actually put over Brock. On his the, way out. Yeah, so The Rock actually did the right thing. And he came back and put over John Cena. Well, Brock still hasn't put anyone over. I guess Seth. There you go. Roman. See, just And those are our guys. But see, that's why, again, the WWE, they don't have their finger on the pulse. Seth and Roman aren't working. They haven't been working. They've used them for the past five years to prop up their company, and their company hasn't been doing well. Ratings haven't been strong. Interest level is dwindling. AEW is an interesting option that people are going to turn to. Well, it's an alternative. That's what people have wanted for a long time, and now they're getting it. So, And it's new. It's something different. WWE, unfortunately, it just seems like it's the same old thing over and over again. Over and over and over. And longer and longer and longer. (laughs) It's not very good. And they're giving us more and more wrestling to watch, right? NXT going to Wednesday nights for two hours. 
That's good, no? No. <laughs> okay, fine. I have to watch these shows, man. Right. It's too much. Seven hours of WWE TV a week minimum without counting pay-per-views. That's a lot. I know. And the thing about AEW to watch as well every week. You're always complaining about how much wrestling you have to watch, how long these shows are, how they're too long. And now you're saying it's good that NXT's two hours? Well, NXT was good wrestling, though. I want to see more good wrestling. That's fine. It's like see more Raw. Like if Raw went to four hours, that'd be the end of the world. But the pay views are short now, too. S- yeah. SummerSlam wasn't a marathon. It thankfully. was like three and a half hours. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. NXT going two hours on Wednesday nights. I mean, I barely watch NXT now as it is. I watch the takeovers, and that's pretty much it. I'll watch, you know, here and there. But Wednesday nights for two hours? Forget that. Well, my question is going to be live, right? Like every week? Apparently, it's going to be live, and it's going to go opposite AEW, right? That's the whole move. They're going on TV. They're going to go to the USA Network. They're going to be live every Wednesday for two hours right against AEW, so it's going to be the Wednesday Night Wrestling Wars. Who would you rather watch? Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole or Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega? Well, just AEW right away just because it's different. I want to see what they have to offer. I've seen NXT, what they've had to offer. Not that it's bad or anything, but I've never seen an AEW TV show. I want to see what that's like. Is this the lowest point that NXT's ever been, though? Like... They're, they're preparing to go on TV, and I feel like I'm less interested in NXT now than I've ever been. There are a few people in NXT that I enjoy. Right. Yeah. Okay? Velveteen Dream, Io Shirai, Shayna, Bianca Belair, Matt Riddle. That's my fave five in NXT right there. Three of them are women. Two of them are dudes. Neither of them, none of them are the, uh, you know, main champion, right? I mean, Shane is a women's champion, but. Like, Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano aren't doing it for me. I like the Undisputed Era, though. I like the. I don't. Okay. They're not over with me. I think they're, like, smaller versions of Seth Rollins. Like, they're decent in the ring. They're okay, you know? They're passable. They are but smaller, yes. I don't see much in the way of like charisma or promo or anything from them. Well, they're great for NXT. People I, like to say Bay Bay after Adam Cole, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, like, he's another great heel. That's true. There's not much there. So if it's that or AEW, I'll watch the Young Bucks all day. Well, AEW. There is talk that they might put people on the main roster on NXT now. Instead. They have to. They have to, right? It could be good then if they do that. Yeah. Well, there's so many guys on the main roster that they're not using. You might as well put them on NXT. But what's going to be the difference then between NXT and the main roster? I think it's pretty much you have three brands. That's going to be it. Like, there are three major brands now. There's three brands, but they're all the same brand. Like, what's the difference between Raw and SmackDown? Nothing much at all. Nothing. No, 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 nothing. NXT's still going to be in Florida, though. Live every week in Florida? They're not going to start touring. They said it full sale, yeah. Okay. So you send some of your people to Florida. So the location will be different. But other than that, what's going to be the difference? If they start swapping in, you know, Raw and SmackDown wrestlers, we're going to see Roman Reigns on NXT now, too. Oh, you see him on every show anyways. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're just going to see Shane McMahon on NXT. I don't need to see that. To be like, I don't need to see NXT if it's just going to be an extension of their current product, which isn't very strong to begin with. I actually don't think we'll see Roman because isn't there a thing where, where Fox doesn't want SmackDown people on Raw? Okay. Or well, yeah, let's see how long that lasts. Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts, but apparently, how, I mean, I can't wait for that to happen when the brand split actually gets taken seriously because right now i have no idea who's on what show well no idea like i lost count on raw this week because like we started with a smackdown match to start raw roman reigns and dolph ziggler right are they both on smackdown they are and they don't even mention like oh it's a 
what was a wild card rule? They don't even talk about wild card rule anymore. It's just like, yep, here's Roman Reigns. Oh, isn't he supposed to be on SmackDown? Yeah, yeah, he'll be there too. Don't worry. Well, what's he on Raw for? You know, whatever. Because. I, I felt because. like half the SmackDown roster was on Raw this week. Makes no sense. No. Makes no sense. Roman beat Dolph Ziegler, of course. Becky Lynch did a promo on Sasha. Sasha did a promo on Becky. And then Natty did a promo on Sasha. I was like, what? What's well, it was good, here? though, because, like, Sasha was able to attack her afterwards. Like, that uh, was good. What do you think of the new Sasha? Well, the blue hair doesn't do anything for me. but Blue it's, hair. It's, she looks a little different, too. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was the makeup. Maybe it's the hair. Maybe it was the lighting. She looked different to me. I don't know if she did something to her face. Like, maybe she got a, a nose job or something going on, Botox. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Sasha. She looks different to me. I'm not saying, uh, you know, she looks bad or whatever. I think she looks fine. She looked fine before. She looks fine now. Just she looks a little different to me. I don't know what it is. I didn't notice. It's probably just the hair. Yeah, I didn't really notice much of a difference. I don't know. I get fooled by makeup, too. She you talks know? the same. Con contouring and all that stuff. Do you understand that stuff? No. Sometimes I'm like, oh, well, well, what's going on with her? Did she get work done? And my girlfriend comes in. She's like, ah, oh, they can do a lot with makeup. I, I was like, oh, yeah. She had hair plugs for a long time. Hair plugs? Yeah. Or like a wig, like a weave? No, she had like the plugs, that, and they came out too. Plugs? Yeah. I don't think you mean plugs. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mean plugs. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Sasha's back. Happy to see her back. Her and Becky? I mean, the match will be good, but... Well, this is going to last like three pay-per-views too, right? Like, it's not going to be one and done. I'm just not... Uh, I, I don't see much with this Sasha Banks thing. Okay, she's a heel. She's got blue hair. What else? Like, the promo she cut was just like, yeah, I'm Sasha. I'm back. I got blue hair. Well, it just seems like she doesn't care about anyone because she kind of ripped on uh, Natty's dad a bit. Oh, yeah. That was rough. Yeah. She's like, oh, Natty, I'll see you in hell. So tell your dad I said hi. Yeah, that's, yeah. Inferring that Jim Neidhart is in hell. It just seems like she doesn't care about anyone but herself, so. She's super evil. Yeah. I didn't love that line there from Sasha either, talking about Jim Neidhart and, you know, I'm and everybody's like, oh, Neidhart would have loved it and da-da-da. I mean, how long can you really let that go on for? Natty's okay with it, so it's fine. Yeah, is it? They did the Eddie and Randy thing. That was fine. That was a long time ago. That was not fine. <laughs> I, we We remember it because it wasn't fine, John. Well, Randy Orton told Rey Mysterio after Eddie Guerrero died, he's like, hey, Ray, why do you keep pointing up to the sky when you're talking about Eddie? Eddie's not up there. He's down there in hell. I was like, ooh, Eddie died three weeks ago, dude. You're really going to go on there? That was bad. Uh, Randy and Kofi were having a good match at SummerSlam till it ended in a double countout. That was bad. You should never end a WWE championship match at SummerSlam in a double countout. Like, it's the second biggest show of the year. It's a WWE title. Give us a finish. They've done it two years in a row now. Have they? Samoa Joe AJ Styles ended a double countout. Well, it wasn't a good idea then. It wasn't a good idea now. And now Kofi and Randy are going to continue feuding. Uh, you know, Randy hit everybody with RKO's on Raw, and then Kofi hit Randy with the Trouble in Paradise on SmackDown. They'll definitely wrestle again at Clash of Champions. It's not official, but, like, whatever. You know it will be. The only match that is official, by the way, is Bailey versus Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown title. Charlotte was on Moment of Bliss this week on SmackDown. And Charlotte says that she's the face of the SmackDown's w women's division. And I was like, oh, cool. So you're on SmackDown. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. It's good. You know? Yeah, it's I was true. like, oh, it's nice for you to remind us, like, what show you're on, because I'm totally confused, you know? It's a good point. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Alexa's like, oh, some people might say Bailey's the face of the division because she's the champion. And Bailey comes out, and Charlotte's like, ha, 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 Bailey. You're not the face of the division. You're an embarrassment to the championship, and I'm going to restore the respect that the title has by beating you and becoming champion once again. And then Bailey's like, yeah, okay, cool. And then she pushed Charlotte off her chair. That was one of my highlights of SmackDown this week, she, seeing Charlotte fall off the chair. It was a good bump. Like, it was a good bump. That's really all, all I took from it. I was like, ooh, that, was, that looked rough. Right, but I just feel Charlotte had a good point, like, 
Bailey had the weakest match at SummerSlam against Ember. She did. So Charlotte kind of is the face of SmackDown because everyone was talking about her match. Charlotte's match, I think, was the only match that meant anything at SummerSlam. Like, her match with Trish was a real passing of the torch. It was a historical moment. It was Trish Trish's last match. Trish and Charlotte's probably only going to happen once ever, and it was at SummerSlam. Every other match you saw at SummerSlam, you'll probably get again on Raw or SmackDown or whatever, except for Goldberg and Ziggler, you know? Right. But, like, that one was stupid. Trish and Charlotte, that was actually something that meant something. Well, I, to me, I found the Kevin Owens Shane McMahon match meant a lot because it felt like the rejuvenation of Kevin's career. Because it felt like he would be going nowhere, and now finally he's going somewhere. Why is he begging not to get fined? Because he has a family to feed. Doesn't want them to... It's so sad, though. Yeah, like, Kevin bit. Owens, uh, he pushed a referee or whatever. What did he do? Why did he get fined? Elias. He pushed of... Elias, who was a ref at the right. time. So uh, he gets fined $100,000, and then he goes to Shane. He's like, look, uh, $100,000 is a lot of money. It might not mean a lot to you, but it means a lot to me. I need that money. Could you not find me? And Shane's like, okay. Oh, did he say, I think about it or something? Like, he didn't Take it say... under advisement. Yeah. But then eventually he was like, okay, I'm going to not find you, right? Mm, I feel he like he, he's going to screw him over again. That's the Shane thing to do. It doesn't make Kevin Owens look particularly cool, though, does it? When he's like, could you please not find me? What would Stone Cold do? And I always go back to this. What would Stone Cold do? Because you got to do what Stone Cold would do. Stone Cold will say, Find me another 100,000, son. Boom, stunner, beer bash, middle fingers everywhere. Hell yeah. Raising hell, going home. Right, but Stone Cold didn't have, like, two kids at home. <laughs> That's, well, he did. He just, they weren't at his home because he right. didn't raise them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, they were in England. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. So <laughs> talked a lot about Stone Cold on this show. He has a new show, by the way. Too. I love the Texas Rattlesnake. But that's what he would do. You know, he would be like, whatever, don't care. But Kevin Owens just seems kind of sad when he's begging for his money. He doesn't seem like a baby face that you can really get behind. Well, you feel He doesn't sorry seem for like him. a guy who's willing to talk trash and, you know, attack his boss. Like, didn't he attack Vince McMahon? Didn't he attack Shane McMahon? Didn't he just have a match with Shane where he, like, beat him half to death? And now he's like, oh, please, Shane, I need the money. What? It's not good. And it's just another thing that the WWE does to ruin one of my favorite characters. Every time you think that they're going to do something good with Kevin Owens, he's like, oh, please, Shane, I need the money. Please, sir. Looking pathetic. Looking weak. Well, I think it just goes to show that he cares about someone else other than himself. Cares about his kids. I, I don't It's not feel- appealing. <laughs> wow it's not. as a as a father yourself i can't believe you're saying that but all right when you're a badass you're not supposed to care about anybody but but yourself so screw your kids look That's at nate it. diaz okay <laughs> nate diaz is the perfect anti-hero everybody loves nate diaz okay nate diaz won a fight last weekend is he a father he is wow but you don't know about it, do you? I, I didn't know about that because you don't need to know about it <laughs> because when you're a father that's the soft part that's the soft, fuzzy inside. You don't want the world to see your soft, fuzzy insides. You want to show them the hard exterior. And that's what people get behind, the hard exterior. Nate Diaz was asked at the press conference, Nate, how has being a father changed your your approach to fighting? This is your first fight with okay. a, a daughter, I think he has. Uh-huh. And Nate goes, Psh, man, I've been a father for years, sending all these fools out here. He said the same thing like all these the all these fools are my sons out here, you know? Yeah. Tremendous. Tremendous line. You don't get to see any of the inside. Nate Diaz doesn't let you in into the other side of Nate Diaz where he's maybe not that that badass anti-hero type of guy. He doesn't let you in. He doesn't let you see that side because Nate knows that you want to believe in the gimmick. You want to believe in Stockton. Nate Diaz, and it's not really a gimmick with Nate. I mean, he really is that dude. Yeah. But he also is a father, and I'm sure, as a father myself, there's something within him that kind of, you know, gives him that extra motivation or whatever. Mm -hmm. It affects him like it affects all of us. Unless you're totally heartless, which, like, you know. 
Maybe you're stone cold or whatever. But Ouch. nevertheless, what the heck? I'm not saying he's heartless. Okay. I'm saying, you know, I don't know what being a father really meant for him. Anyways. Ye. Well. Okay. Did he see his kids? I don't know the whole situation. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to yeah. talk about. We're not saying bad things about Stone Cold. Okay, we love Stone Cold. However, Nate didn't let you in. Kevin shouldn't let you in either. He's let you in. Like his son Owen was in promos on Raw with him. It doesn't make him a badass. That makes him a human being. That's fine. You don't have to be a human being. You're supposed to be a superhero. You're supposed to be the anti-hero, Kevin Owens. Supposed to be the guy fighting against the McMahons. You never saw about Stone Cold Steve Austin and his kids and him needing the money to take care of his kids, okay? Stone Cold didn't care. Right. The Rock didn't need the money. The Rock has more money than you. Ric Flair didn't need the money. Could you picture Ric Flair begging for $100,000? Ric Flair take his $100,000 gator shoes off, throw them in the audience, and then rip up $100,000 of bills and then go spend another $100,000 in the bar. And he'll be $300,000 in debt at the end of the day, but he doesn't care because he's, woo, by God, the nature boy. And you love him for it. You love him for it. No one loves a man who begs for $100,000 from Shane McMahon. Oh, please, Mr. McMahon, can I have the $100,000? I really need it. Get the hell out of here, Kevin Owens. You're a jabroni. No one wants to see that, you weak son of a, (laughs) you know? Wow. Stone Cold would see... You know, could you imagine The Rock cutting a promo on Kevin Owens? Oh, please, Mr. McMahon. I need my money. It doesn't matter if you need your money, you know? <laughs> he would obliterate him. Doesn't work. Does not work. I just feel you're confusing Stone Cold and Kevin Owens too much. Like, it's not the same guy. But he should be. He should no. be very close. He does a stunner. I don't know. Is that what's confusing me? I think so. And he's feuding with the McMahons, which Austin did a lot. Yeah, he's feuding with the McMahon, and he's doing stunners. How am I supposed to not confuse him with Stone Cold? Well, I guess... And he always talks about how Stone Cold told him, never stop running your mouth. You know, he tells that story over and over again. Everybody knows right. Stone Cold was a big influence in his career, and we think he could be the next generation Stone Cold. But the next generation Stone Cold doesn't beg for a hundred grand. I mean, of course, a hundred grand is a lot of money. If you gave me a hundred grand today, I would dance and I would retire from everything. I'd be like, I'm rich. I don't need any more money. Goodbye. But, you know, when you're a WWE superstar, you're on TV, you're Kevin Owens, you shouldn't be begging for money. It's not a good look in a promo. Remember when Shawn Michaels was begging JBL for money? Did Shawn Michaels seem cool? Remember that? Shawn had Or when cool Big Show him. was crying because uh, he needed money and the McMahons were like in charge of him? Yeah, Big Show, the, both of them lost their coolness a long time ago. Yeah, but it's never happened. cool when you're crying for money in the WWE. It's never a good look. You think the Million Dollar Man would ever do that? He made other people cry for money, yeah. Yeah, well, jabronis. They were all jabronis. Or children. Yeah, the children stuff was great, yeah. Great stuff. Can't do that anymore. <laughs> so Kevin Owens continues his losing streak of being a loser on TV after he begs for his money, and Shane's like, mm, Maybe. Elias beats Kevin Owens in the King of the Ring tournament. Shane did cheat, though, because right. Shane's like, I'll tell you what, Kevin Owens, I'm going to lift the fine, but if you ever put your hands on another official again, I will have no choice but to fire you. And Kevin Owens can't be fired. I mean, he needs the job. He's got kids. He's basically a Heath Slater, you know, in a, on, on a higher level on the card. He's a main event. Well, set. You know, high mid-card Heath Slater. That's his gimmick currently. So he needs his job, right? So when Shane McMahon shows up during the Elias match and has a referee shirt on, Kevin Owens can't do anything. He can't attack Shane because he's got kids. He needs the job. He needs the money. Poor Kevin Owens. Right. And then Shane does a fast count and Elias wins. Poor Kevin Owens gets bamboozled again. This is not a guy you can get behind. I think you definitely can. You feel sorry for him a lot. Like You just getting... feel sorry for him. Eventually, you stop feeling sorry for the guy, and you're just like, oh, you're just pathetic. You can't get behind a guy who's pathetic. You want to get behind a guy who wins, who kicks people's asses. You want to see the, the Hulk Hogan. 
when Hulk Hogan came out, you're like, oh, here comes Big Terry. He's going to beat you all up. Here comes The Rock. Rock bottoms for everybody. Here comes Stone Cold. Stunners all around. Here comes Kevin Owens. Oh, he's probably going to get fooled again. Some I, sad thing will happen to him. I just don't think you can make Kevin too invincible. I mean, he beat Shane. He overcame the odds at SummerSlam. Now, going forward, if you're continuing the story, Kevin can't just destroy everyone. People start resenting people like Roman Reigns when that happens. Like you resent Seth Rollins because he just wins all the time. That's not why we resent Seth Rollins it's or part of Roman the reason. Reigns. It's part no. of the reason. It's because they're pushed to the top. They're made to be the main guys when there are better guys out there. I don't resent Seth or Roman. I resent the WWE for putting those guys in that position when Kevin Owens is right there. When Sami Zayn is right there, who's now like Shinsuke Nakamura's manager for some reason. Well, he snapped because he lost his King of the Ring match. To Cedric Alexander. So the King of the Ring has begun. I guess we should get to the King of the Ring. Kevin Owens has lost to Elias in the opening round. Right. So Elias moves on to the semifinals, which they called it the semifinals. They're the quarterfinals. Did you notice that? But, like, the semifinals for SmackDown. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. I know, but... They're like, oh, they advanced to the semifinals of the King of the Ring. Do they? No, no, no. Just the the SmackDown semifinals. Right. So the quarterfinals of the tournament. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> Can't they just call it the quarterfinals? What are they doing? It's a, it's a tournament. There are uh, eight, 16 people in this tournament, right? 16-man tournament. It should have been a one-night thing. Uh, they should have had the qualifying matches leading up to TV, and then Clash of Champions should have been the King of the Ring. Maybe One night, eight-man tournament, just like it used to be. That's the best way King of the Ring was always done, right? Right. That's our favorite King of the Ring incarnation. Yeah, eight-man, not 16, though. No, eight-man, one yeah. night. Yeah. They used to do it where they had 16 at the start, but on, like, superstars or whatever, Raw. they'd have... Yeah, or Raw, maybe, in the early days of Raw. They'd have, you know, elimination matches. Qualifying matches. Qualifying matches yeah. to the King of the Ring. And then, you know, you'd qualify to be in the tournament on that one night. And for me and most wrestling fans, that's how we prefer it. But the problem is you have Clash of Champions where every title has to be defended. That takes up a lot of the pay-per-view time. Plus, you're going to have a tournament. It's no, too much. No, but I'm saying it should have been called King of the Ring. Ah. Clash of Champions should not exist. Well, that didn't happen. They love Clash of Champions. It's a Dusty Rhodes thing. Uh-huh. Well, they should give it to AEW then. That's not going to happen. You know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. They're not even quote his name. They so. won't even give him his name. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. So, Elias advances in the King of the Ring. He will take on the winner of Ali and Buddy Murphy. Who do you have winning that match? That's tough, but I'd go with Buddy Murphy. I'd go with Buddy, too. So, it'll be Elias versus Buddy. Who do you have winning that? I'll go with Buddy 2 again. Buddy 2, eh? Yep. Okay. So then, let's see. Let's check out the other side of this bracket. Chad Gable will wrestle Shelton Benjamin. Who do you have winning that? i go with Gable. Okay. Andrade already beat Apollo Crews, so you say it'll be Gable versus Andrade. Winner, Andrade? Yes. And then we see Andrade versus Buddy Murphy in the SmackDown Finals, which will really be the semifinals of the tournament. The finals of this will take place at Clash of Champions on September 15th. So you have Buddy Murphy versus Andrade as your SmackDown finalist. Who do you have going on to the finals? It's tough, but I go with Buddy Murphy. Okay. Buddy Murphy. I think I'm going to go with Andrade to go to the finals. I had everything just like you. Right. But I'd go with Andrade in the finals. Over on Raw, Samoa Joe already beat Cesaro. He has advanced. Pretty good match on Raw this week. Very good. Uh, Ricochet and Drew McIntyre will be wrestling at some point. I think Ricochet will win that one. I think McIntyre. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, if it is McIntyre versus Cesaro, who do you, or versus Joe, who do you have winning? I don't think that makes sense. McIntyre versus Joe? No, it makes sense. Ricochet versus Joe makes way more sense because there's a heel and a baby face in that match. Two heels doesn't make sense. Cesaro and Joe? Like, wasn't that two heels? Kind of. I feel it's still a kind of two with McIntyre and Joe, which will happen, I think, and McIntyre will win. Okay. 
I think Ricochet will wrestle Joe, and I think Ricochet will win. Okay? Mm-hmm. Cedric Alexander already beat Sami Zayn. He'll take on the winner of Miz and Baron Corbin. I've got Corbin. Yeah, I got Corbin too. Corbin versus Alexander. Who wins? I've got Corbin. Uh, Alexander. Okay, interesting. So you have uh, Cedric Alexander versus, what do you have here? Rick, uh, Drew McIntyre right. in your Raw Finals. I have Ricochet versus Baron Corbin in my Raw Finals. Okay, interesting. yeah. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. We have different Raw Finals, completely different. So who do you have from Raw going to the Finals of the King of the Ring Tournament? I have Ricochet beating Baron Corbin to advance to the finals to take on Andrade, where I have Ricochet winning the whole thing. Got McIntyre going against Buddy Murphy. Yeah, I think Buddy Murphy might win this. So you think it'll be Drew McIntyre beating Cedric Alexander in the Raw Finals to go on to face Buddy Murphy in the finals. You have Drew versus Buddy in your finals. I have Ricochet versus Andrade. Got to say I like my finals better. No, I like my finals better, I think. So who do you have winning? Buddy Murphy as the new king of the ring? King it's, Buddy? It's tough. It's tough. Cause like, I king think Drew? Drew? Drew's obviously the favorite, so it's really hard to go against him, but a nice surprise would be for Buddy Murphy to win this. That's tough. I don't know right now yet. We'll have to wait and see. I think Ricochet makes the most sense because his Twitter name is already King Ricochet. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, He's already got the king gimmick going for him. Let him do it on TV. Ricochet needs something. I guess they have the superhero gimmick for him already. Whoever wins this tournament, do they do the king gimmick? Well, they have the whole throne and scepter and crown there, no, at ringside all the time. Uh-huh. So, If Drew McIntyre wins, it's going to be exactly like the Wade Barrett king. Remember that, King Barrett? That was terrible. Was, king, was Wade Barrett the last king of the ring? I believe so, yeah. Oh 2015, I think. So bad. Remember, because they wanted to get rid of the bad news thing, so they gave him King Barrett? Yeah, he beat Neville in the finals in 2015. Yeah. King of the Ring 2002 was the last one? No, that can't no be. that's not correct. Booker Sh- T was King of the Ring too, right? King Booker. King Booker, Sheamus in 2012. Oh, yeah, King Sheamus. Huh. D- didn't work out too well, those last two kings. No. No, it didn't work. Remember that weird crown they gave Sheamus too? Yeah, it was odd. It was like leather. Yeah, it was weird. King Barrett didn't work either. He was like so cheap looking, his outfit. King Booker was great though. King Booker is the only king in the modern era that's worked. Like in the past 20 years, the only good king gimmick was King Booker. Yeah. How many good king gimmicks have they had really? King Haku, King Harley Race, Macho King Savage. King Bret Hart. He didn't really work the king gimmick though. No. So I'm talking much. about King gimmicks. Jerry the King Lawler, of course. King and Mabel. King Booker. Did King Mabel really work the King gimmick? Oh yeah, he changed his whole outfit and everything. Uh yeah, I think yeah, I think I saw an action figure with that outfit recently. I believe it. Cool. Johnny North, we are over time once again. I mean, we've been gone for a while. It but makes we sense. are back from vacation and we are back in full effect. We'll be back next week. And the week after and the week after that, unless I move away to Nova Scotia, which may happen. So, John, until then, when can people see you in the ring? Uh, September 21st, I'll be in Hawkesbury, Ontario, and I'll be wrestling the Blood Hunter. The Blood Hunter? Yeah. He uh, recently destroyed Teddy Hart in a match. Oh, in my. In his debut match. So this will be a lot of fun to see what kind of violence he can bring. The Blood Hunter? Sounds like fun. Where is this? It'll be in Hawkesbury. Hawkesbury, Quebec? Ontario. Hawkesbury, Ontario. So huh. probably about an hour away from Montreal. Okay. How far from Peterborough? Probably a couple hours away. At least, right? Yeah, at least. <laughs> well, try to make the trip to go see Johnny North. The date for that again? September 21st. September 21st. More info on that on his Twitter feed at North Genesis. Follow him on Instagram at Genesis Johnny North. You could follow me on all the things at Dave Simon MMA. If you want to watch this show, if you're just listening to the show, you can watch it at youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net. Go to the channel, subscribe, click that bell, get the notifications. For more info on all of that, you can go to our official website at ringsidereport.net. Ringsidereport.net. Very easy. Triple W. You know, it's a website. Remember those websites? 
You People don't still have those. You need to do Triple W that much anymore, but yeah. No, you could just do ringsidereport.net. Some people still do all the W's. AJ, yes. AJ does all the W's. He probably does the HTTP colon slash slash. It's pretty good. He knows the colon slash slash. I don't like, think he wow. does. He might do HTTP. <laughs> oh, we have to do that. Anyways, that's another story for Ringside Report. And you can watch AJ, Hollywood AJ, the fantastic man who is all about the Central Coast. He's, he's from the Central Coast. He loves it. Uh, and uh, all of that and Big Fred revelations on this week's episode of Ringside Report, which you can catch on our YouTube channel and over at ringsidereport.net. Big thanks to you for listening and watching, and a big thanks to, uh, to everybody else helping us out around the world. For Johnny North, I am Dave Simon, and this has been Wrestling Uncensored. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah.